contracts can be between EPGs to allow traffic between endpoints connected directly to the ASI fabric, where these endpoints are in different security groups, so different EPGs, but can also be between the layer three out and EPGs. The layer three out, uh, I should let's say layer three external or uh, or uh, layer three inst p, how it's called in the object model, is the uh, configuration that allows you to classify external networks uh, traffic, external layer three traffic from the fabric into security zone, the layer three external. And then with contracts, you can define which of these external uh, IP addresses or subnets are allowed to talk to uh, servers directly connected to the ACI fabric. So the configurations are very similar. The only main difference between using EPGs and, and configuring the layer three out connectivity is that the layer three external is slightly different than the regular EPGs. And in a few slides, we'll talk about uh, the key differences. When you configure the contract to filter the traffic, you have to define which APG is a provider of the contract and which PG is consumer of a contract. This is primarily to establish a direction because in the, in the hardware, what you want to have are filters that are applied in the EPG1 to EPG2 direction and other filters applied in EPG2 to EPG1 direction. So this is mapped to consumer to provider direction or provider to consumer direction. Now, establishing which EPG is a provider is, can be very obvious. If you have like, uh, say, web servers that provide services to clients in a, another EPG, or it could be something you need to just decide and choose when, for instance, an EPG has servers that are providing certain ports and consuming other services from, a, from the other EPG, then the choice could also be a bit um, arbitrary, and, but it's necessary for you to choose which side you call a provider, which side you call a consumer. Now, based on that direction, uh, you need to define filters and what I mean by this is that when you define a filter in the filter rules, you have the concept of source and destination layer four ports. And source is referring to the consumer side and destination is referring to the provider side. So when you configure a contract, you'll define a filter, for instance, in this case, with source any destination port 80 and that is the right filter to define if you associate that filter or a contract where the provider is providing port 80. If the provider and consumer in this example were reversed, the filter configuration should also be the opposite in terms of source and destination ports. But for the majority of the configurations, what you would define is filter with destination port that is what the provider APG provides. Then it would need also the reverse filter to allow traffic from the provider APG to the consumer APG. And with the default contracts configuration, which has these options automatically selected, the options called apply both directions and the reverse filter ports, this filter is programmed by ACI automatically for you. Okay. Uh, these notes at the bottom of the page provide you the location where you find the configurations. So um, we talked about the filters, we talked about the contracts, but two have some other building blocks in between. And that's because there are more than just permit and deny actions, but you can also perform other operations on the contracts. So this is the hierarchy. So you go and define a filter and the filter is made of multiple rules. So a filter you call HTTP or let's say web could consist of the filter rule for the HTTP port, the filter rule for port 443, for instance, 
And these two rules together would constitute the filter that you can call web or HTTP and so on. And when you also say this filter to the contract, the way to do so is by defining a subject. And, and the subject is a collection of filters. So at the filter level, you define whether the action is a permit or a deny or a permit plus log or a deny plus log and whether or not there is TCAM compression in place to take less space in the TCAM. And at the subject level, you define whether this is associated with a service graph or the quality of service to apply to this entire subject. Now, you could have multiple contracts, all of them with a single subject, or you could have one contract with a lot of subjects. And from a data plane perspective, they're absolutely equivalent. Okay, so that's how the configuration is organized. Now, you need to realize that in most cases, you just need one contract between an EPG pair. As long as you have a contract, then you have a direction, you have a provider side and a consumer side. And by using multiple subjects, you can add more and more rules to this contract. So that's one way to configure things. You could also configure multiple contracts, as I just said, each one of them with a single subject. Assuming you use a single contract, you can then define filters for the consumer to provider direction and for the provider to consumer direction. Okay. If you have a single field, sorry, a single contract defined with bidirectional and apply both directions and reverse filter ports options, as I mentioned before, the provider to consumer configuration happens automatically. It's done by ACI by switching the destination port and putting it as a source port. So if you look at the UI, the way uh, the, the, all the concepts that we described, the way they are mapped are like you see here, you have a contracts folder, standard, and then this is the contract name. And in this example, there's only one subject which we call TCP port 80, but there could be more than one. This subject, in this example has one filter. The filter is called HTTP and that's where it comes from. The filter comes from the folder called filters where you define all the filters. So back to the contract, this is saying match the ports defined in the filter HTTP and then, and then this is actually, I should have said it's a filter chain because there could be more than one filters inside of it. So Associated with this filter chain, there is an action which is the permit or deny or log or permit deny, permit plus log, deny plus log, and so on. The filter itself is what you see here at the bottom. It's actually a filter entry here, part of the filter chain there. When you have ether type, the protocol, source and destination ports, and you can see here that this is matching any source of destination port. Um, and the term unspecified, it's the same as any in classic ACLs. Okay. Now, there's one option that is not selected by default when you configure contracts, which is called stateful. And the stateful option is defined on the filter. And this option is useful for TCP traffic because it allows the return traffic from the servers only if it has the act flag set. And the reason is because we ACI with this option once, I mean, allows you to control that the traffic coming from the servers is related to connections that then have been originated from the consumer side towards the provider side. Now, this option is disabled by default, but it's a good idea to enable it. The only scenario where it doesn't take effect is if you also have compression enabled. If 
for optimizing the hardware space. Now, if you also want to have real stateful filtering, meaning the matching of sequence numbers and all these things that ACI doesn't do, um, you need to have the application virtual engine installed on the servers. And in that case, the application virtual engine takes care also of doing all the stateful matching of the, um, of the sequence numbers, and so real the classic more st the stat stateful and uh, filtering that firewalls do like a firewall. Again, ACI is not a replacement for a firewall. I'm just important to state this point. Um, but with the AV integration, the stateful option, it's more like a firewall. Now, if you need to create contracts to allow traffic from the outside and from internal endpoints to the outside, um, this configuration is done similarly to regular APGs. The key difference is that to classify traffic from the outside, you need to go under the layer three out, and then that's where you define the external APGs. And, um, and there you say which external subnets you want to match, for instance, 2020 20 in this example. Realize that this classification is per VRF. So even if the layer three external is defined in a given layer three out, it's capable of matching traffic entering from any layer three out of that VRF. And the matching is based on the longest prefix match. Other than these contracts between layer three outs, and EPGs are absolutely the same as contracts between normal EPGs.